Hello, I'm Joshua with MailParser. In this video, I'll be showing you how to extract data from your saved Zillow search emails. As they arrive in our system, we remove any images because our app only extracts text and table data. So this is already out of the way as it's imported. And this is what the data is going to look like after we're done with it. So what we need to do is create parsing rules to extract the address data and the URL data. So these are already created, but just to go through the process again, I want to show you how we actually got that data so you can do this yourself. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to be extracting data from the body as you select your data source. We want to use HTML because it organizes our data a little bit better. Um, the, what we're going to do now is we have an entire render of the email and we're going to kind of chip away at things that we don't want, like things that aren't in the table and then we are going to kind of split it all up and categorize it. So the first thing we're going to do is we, we don't want the, um, the data before all of our house data. So we're going to start after this search term here. And then we will set a, uh, another start position filter to start after this pipe symbol. This is just being extra safe. You can add multiple start afters to hone in on where you actually want to start extracting your data because we're extracting all of that table data in this one rule. So what do we do next? We are next going to remove the, the links here because they're really kind of, um, they're really making it hard to see our data. We can extract those links in another rule, which I'll show. So now we're starting to get a little bit better uh, data that we can see here. We want to remove all these empty lines. And then I believe we're going to be setting the end of the, the rule. As you can see up at the top, we'll give you the entire email and we can see, see all matching results is going to be a good indicator that the table is going to be finished. So we're going to find an end position and then see all matching results. And then what we're going to do is turn this data into uh, table data and this will allow us to filter out some things because there are certain things that we have to, you know, that are in some of these entries and not in others. So you can see for sale, new listing, new construction, new listing, um, you know, price reductions. We need to get rid of all these. So what we're going to do to accomplish that is we're going to convert the text into table data. And this enables a completely different set of filters here, as you can see. So what we're going to do is add a search and replace filter to remove a ton of data from here. Search and replace, text replace. Oh, this is, oops. Oh, oh, I see what I did, my mistake. Okay, that was the wrong filter. That's precious time lost. So we want to, um, we want to use the filter rows by values. Um, and what this will do is it's gonna look at every row and we're going to keep everything that doesn't include all of these entries, uh, you know, the builder name, new listing, price reduced. You can capture all of that data in another video or in another filter, but that's not something that we want to do right now. So we're going to actually convert the data back into a text block to give us access to a very special uh, filter, the repeating text blocks filter. And what this will do is this will chop everything up and organize it into columns. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to start repeating text data as soon as I see a dollar sign because we've trimmed out everything so that every single entry starts with a dollar sign here. So we have all of this beautiful table data. We're going to remove that last column because it is not what we want. So remove column five. Then we also need to split these, this column here at 20 seconds. We're going to split this column using the pipe symbol. Split column two. And that's basically most of our data extracted. I did use the I did use another one of these filters to split the address data. You can do that as well. 
If you have any questions about how any of this was done, please feel free to reach out to us at support at mailparser.io.